us, right? It says it's going to give us life and life more abundantly, right? In our verse 9 of Daniel chapter 1, it's going to give us favor and goodwill. Favor and goodwill. Favor and goodwill. Favor and goodwill. Water and the well. Water and the well. Grace and mercy, right? Goodness and mercy. Provision, rest. That's what God does for us. Right, and that's what we've been able to see running through uh, the night verse of Daniel chapter one, from taking several keynotes, one to five was pretty much definition, six and seven we've been dwelling on, it's pretty much talking about how to cultivate favor and goodwill. That's what we've been doing on this, this last two weeks. And I'm just gonna key in to where we stopped yesterday. We stopped yesterday talking about uh, Jacob, Right, and I just wanted to. The last part I wanted to key in talking about Jacob was talk about Esau. You see, Jacob got the blessing that Esau was supposed to get, and it was like Isaac said, I no more have a blessing to give you, right? I no more have that which I would proceed for me to give you, but it's something you can still tap into. It's called the gift of the father, it's called the gift of the father, and that is even more powerful than the blessing you should have received right that's where a lot of people miss it people start running after fake prophets fake apostles thinking that they are helpless but god is yet to make something that is helpless is yet to make something that is useless when the father said he blessed his creation i said go and prosper that has not been taken away even when man fell that go and prosper is still there right so so we see in um in uh, Genesis 27, 40, right? Uh, it, Isaac told him that you'll, you'll be a servant with the blessing of Jacob to him. However, there's a way you can break yourself free. You can break from that hold. And that is when you get angry on the inside of you. When you feel that this bondage is enough, I need to break it free. When you are determined deep within, Nothing can hold you back. And again, that's what we learned in verse eight, right? He says that Daniel determined, determined, determined. He made a decision. He made a judgment, right? Our ability or inability to make judgment is what kills us. Is what takes us to heaven, whether it be temporal or spiritual. You are either going to go to heaven or hell in this life by what you whether you make a judgment or not, whether you make decisions or not, whether you determine in your heart or not, whether you take control of your life or not, it has nothing to do with God. Yet preachers deceive us and say, he's God, he's God, he's God. God is neutral as far as your blessing goes, right? God is equally available to every single person. He says that he is not mocked, he is not distorted, he is not the difference maker. He, he has created, he has given the word Right? He has given the power to, to, to have wealth to everyone. Whether you make wealth or not, now is what you do with, God, with what God has given you. Why right? God is neutral. He says God is not mocked. Whatsoever a person sows, whatsoever a person does, will be who will determine the result he gets. Simple. It has nothing to do with this seed faith, the pastor, a prophet that has spoken, prophet that has not spoken. Those are deceptions. Eyes of a devil. It has no bearing on your prosperity. Your prosperity all determines on what you do, what decision you make, what are you determined about, right? What are you? What have you determined that you will no more take? What have you? What are you tired about, right? That is what determines whether you prosper or not. It has nothing to do with all the fake things they tell you. No, apostle lay hands on me. Zero, right? And that's what Genesis twenty-seven forty is about. That's what Isaac told Esau. 